Well, here I am, and welcome back to the little tiny homestead. I'm here in my kitchen waiting for my friend Diane, and the theme of the day is how to make lye soap. And she's going to be coming to help me out with this because she wants to know how to do it for her high school science class because it is a chemical reaction called saponification. And so we'll get into that as soon as she gets here. Okay, so um, here we are, and we are going to make another batch of lye soap. When you see this video, it's going to be intermixed with another a video that I did with my friend Diane making lye soap. This time we are using my husband's recipe, and he also, it's one we've used most often before. And also he um, has a lot of knowledge that I would like to impart on this video. But this is the soap turned out really well that we made with Diane. So it was a little different recipe. As you recall, if you're watching the video, you'll see that we use some co coconut oil with olive oil. This time we're using only coconut oil. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start. Okay, so my friend has arrived and we are going to start uh, mixing up the ingredients that we need to make the soap. So we, um, first of all, we'll start with the oils that you need. And we have in this big bowl, the oils. This is 32 ounces of coconut, I'm looking at Diane here too, <laughs> of coconut and olive oil. <clears throat> I have generally used only coconut, um, but I didn't have enough today. So you can use eat, you can use both. So what I did was it's 20 ounces of coconut oil. And I wanted to show one thing here, but this is what I actually use for coconut oil. And it, as you can see, it comes, I saved a little bit back here, in a solid form, really. And you have to melt it before you start making your soap. So what I did, I, I put it in here, 20 ounces of that. And then I, I put it in the microwave, melted it. And then I put in another 12 ounces of olive oil. So <clears throat> this is set to go. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to we're going to move the camera a little bit here so you can see what we're doing. And then we're going to start mixing things up and go through the process. We do have some directions here as well that we're actually looking at to make sure that we follow them because we are using lye and so when you're using anything like that it's good to follow directions yes indeed and this is a chemistry teacher so she knows you've got a chemistry biology all the sciences all right the sciences. and you have to follow directions but anyway so what we want to do is we we want to get our oil heated up we use now a crock pot to heat up our oil to make our soap we actually used to make it over a fire outside <laughs> And that is the, the homestead way, <laughs> but we're doing it the easy way. Um, since we have an old crock pot, suggest you get an old crock pot, don't use your good one. So get an old crock pot. And um, so what we, we're gonna do is we're gonna stick our, our oil here into our crock pot. All right, so we're still using the crock pot method for this, and we've already heated up the crock pot a little bit. We're using 782, grams of coconut oil so we'll go ahead and put that in the crock pot and it's already been melted in the microwave because as you've seen before the coconut oil does come solid so and it's already pretty warm so um, it'll heat up as david puts together the lye mixture and the lye mixture is um 134 grams of the granulated lye and how much water? 250 gram, I'm sorry, milliliters, milliliters of water. So he will take that out to the deck and he's going to be dissolving that. And um, in, when I was with Diane in the recipe we, we were using, uh, it was said to use metal. And I think because it doesn't want you to use something that is wooden that you might reuse in that particular recipe. Um, you could use an old wooden spoon. David just uses a stick and he disposes of the stick. When so get all that in there. And then we're going to turn it on to high to start with. We want to get this to a temperature um, of about 120 to 130. So I would also suggest that you, 
have a thermometer. This is an instant read thermometer to make sure that you have the correct temperature because you want it to be the right temperature before you put in your lime mixture. So we have, we now have this on high in our crock pot. Next thing you have to have is 12, and this is 12.16 if it's close to it, of water. Put it in to a glass receptacle. Actually, you don't want it in plastic. Okay, and you should, and also when you stir the light with the water, use metal. Don't use wood or anything else to stir it. Now my husband generally does this part. Okay. Water to the lime. The lie to the water. Never put the water in the lie. Okay, so we're out here on the deck where there's plenty of ventilation. I'm going to ask Diane to wait for a minute here. She is actually wearing protection gloves. I'm going to quick pan to her face just real quick. She doesn't like it too much. But wait, that's where is she? Woo, there she is. She has glasses on, which is a very good thing to do. I have 4.844 ounces of lye. Now, she's very carefully, it's a little windy out here, so that's why we're kind of sheltered here in the corner. She's going to very carefully pour the lye into the water and stir it up for a little bit. Stir and as I'm pouring? You can just pour it and then stir. Okay. Let it sit. Once it's dissolved, we're just going to let it sit for 10 minutes. So, okay. here she goes. And if you if you want to, Diane, you can actually touch the side. You're gonna feel it starts to get it starts to get you. There you oh, see that science teacher's coming out now. <laughs> I see the smoke, yeah. Okay, so he is adding the lye to, it's raining out here, so we're gonna do this as quickly as possible. He's adding the lye to the water. Remember never to add the water to the lye. Add the lye to the water. And then he's just gonna stir that until it is dissolved. And the last time when Diane and I did this, we, we set it for 10 minutes. That's okay too. Either way, like I said, these are different recipes. The 10 minutes was probably just so that it made sure that it was dissolved. And once again, um, if you touch it, it's hot because that's a reaction. And Diane had a name for it. Do you know what that name was, David? Exothermic reaction. Exothermic reaction. I don't think I let everybody know about this. This is the lye that I actually use. We purchased this from Amazon. Um, very easy to, to find. <clears throat> and I did tell you about the coconut oil. This was just purchased at Walmart. Don't think I mentioned that you do need a scale. It really is important to be as accurate as possible with your measurements. So make sure you have a scale like this or something like that. Okay, so just a couple things to think about when you're making, I'm checking the temperature here, uh, the lye soap is, yes, lye is, is dangerous. And a lot of people will say to me, oh, well, how can you have soap with lye in it? It's, you know, it's going to be bad. But once you get that chemical reaction, the saponification, it, it does not have the same, um, I don't know what the chemical makeup, I guess it does change. Diane, would you say the chemical it's makeup? Neutralized. So it's neutralized. I, and so you don't have to worry about that. But while you're making soap, I think, you know, just for the you know, sake of safety, you probably don't want children necessarily around when you're doing this just because of using the lye. So we are actually at about 100. I just wanted to also mention a couple more things. Um, I did tell you about the lye and the coconut oil. Um, and olive oil, you can use any brand you want if you happen to use olive oil. Like I said, I use 20 ounces of the coconut oil and 12 ounces of olive oil. You can use half and half. I would have probably used pure coconut oil if I had actually had enough. I ran out. Um, but I wanted to show you those things because, and this is a shout out to you, Tim. You wanted to see all those items and where to get them. Amazon, Walmart, your best bet. 
I also want to let you know there is this vinegar here. And it's not something I've used before when I am making soap, but it is an acid. So lye being base, this, if you happen to spill it on yourself or in something or on something, this will neutralize it. Right, Diane? Yes. And so that it's good to kind of have that just hanging around just in case you might need it. But you know, if you're very, very careful, and that's what we've been, you're, you're not going to have a problem. Okay, um, just a tidbit that Diane just reminded me of that vinegar is a weak acid. So, and of course, lye being, um, and what's the name of the lye again? The, the sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a very strong base. So basically, you'd need a, a lot of vinegar yes. and it, 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 it'll help, but it's not going to necessarily stop. If you're having a burn on your hand or something yeah. from the lye, wash it with water. Just keep flooding it with water. Flood water, it with water, 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 water. And then you can put on some acetic acid, which yes. is the vinegar. Okay, so basically you're flooding with water first. That's yeah, your, yeah, your main thing. Off of there. Awesome. Good thing to know. I don't want you to be afraid to make lye soap, though. We, we were saying all these things just for basic safety. But don't be afraid to make it. This is, um, it's really cool to make it. And it's also something that, you know, it's, it's natural. It's awesome. So make sure that you don't get scared. Just do it. That's right. All right, so we are at 120. I'm going to make sure here one more time. My handy dandy instant read thermometer. <clears throat> make sure we're up to 120. And by the way, that's Fahrenheit. I know a lot of people do Celsius. Not quite there yet. It was, I thought it was, maybe not. 115, we're close. So I don't think you want to stick the probe on the bottom of the yes, crock that's pot. Right. Just do it in the liquid. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you said that, Diane, because if you put it on the bottom, just like anything you're making, like you shouldn't be putting the thermometer like making candy or if you're making fudge, you should not be sticking it on the bottom because that will be inaccurate because the bottom is going to be much hotter than yes. the liquid. So just right into the liquid and we are at 120. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using this item and it's a, I, some people call it a, a stick blender. I call it an immersion blender. Diane is going to very slowly pour in the, um, the lye. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do, and I can even do that because I might let Diane do this. What we're going to do is use the immersion blender for four to five minutes once we put the lye into the fat, into the oil. Um, if, you, if you've never used an immersion blender before, <laughs> this is the main thing. You need to keep it in do not pull it out when it's on or you will have everything everywhere don't even turn it on until you stick it in there once you stick it in there turn it off before you pull it out but what we're going to do is once she pours the lye in we are going to swish this around in there and you can actually immersion blender is interesting because it's the blade is not right against the the um rim the base so basically if you put the base right on the bottom you're not going to affect the blade at all. Good. So we're going to go ahead and let her do that. We're going to um, kind of start this process. Yeah. Very gently, Diane puts in the lye. And this is when it's this, the, the oil is saying, what's going on? <laughs> I'm going to react. Okay, success. She has put the lie in. And now we're going to actually turn this on and see how it goes. And what I often do, and my husband does this too, because I get a little nervous. <laughs> this is the first time I've made this without him. Um, I just kind of pulse it a little bit to begin with, to kind of get to start moving around. You can see it's already tremendous color change. Yes, as soon as you yes. Put in the lye. And and because I have olive oil in here, yes. it won't be quite as white as my previous uh -huh. ones that I've made. <laughs> Pretty time the four to five minutes. We don't have to necessarily right. set the timer. Wait, be careful. So that's why it's best to pulse. Don't go crazy. This just helps start start blending it a little bit. 
it, it begins to have a life of its own. Once you get this um, going, it'll start to almost wave. You'll start seeing waves of, of uh, soap forming. <laughs> alternative methods of stirring it aside from this blender um you could you could use any kind of, you could probably just stir it with if you wanted to just stir it with um a wooden spoon you could do that okay. so and this is my old wooden spoon i i won't use that for food anymore okay. so if would you like you could actually try that diane why don't you try using that a little bit we'll get this guy out of there since we did a little bit of that now Here, you want to put it into this yeah we will do that and then we'll get this out Two, of the way three. Okay, we'll let you stir that a while. You can let it get hotter, although what we need to do, um, once we do the four to five minutes of stirring it, we are actually supposed to turn it down to low. So I think we're going to go ahead, it's pretty close to that, that time, so we're going to turn that down to low, and it's starting to thicken a little bit, would you say? Yes, I say so. Okay. What we're going to do after she stirs this for a few more minutes, we're actually going to cover it and let it sit on low. Should I be scraping the sides? Uh, nah, not necessary. It's going to start eventually hoofing up on there anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we are getting ready now to put the lye, or the, you know, the lye mixture into the um, oil. Okay, now what we're going to be doing is using the immersion blender. It gets it going a lot quicker than just stirring it. You can just stir it. Um, if you can explain, please, what happens when you are using the immersion blender to combine the two substances. I don't know what you're doing other than just mixing it really well so that the lye and the oil are in close relationship with each other. Okay. So like you talk about like the molecules or what, what would that mean? So the molecules of the lye and the coconut oil are in close relationship, which causes it to become uh, a reaction, to have a reaction, which is saponification, and then becomes a solid. Okay, so you can see it's pretty clear. So at, it's already getting cloudy and also it's also thickening up already a little bit. Now, as you can see, it is getting very pudding-like, pudding-like, and what's that called then, David, as we, Trace. as it traces, which means you see it on top of, um, on, on top of the other liquid, or it, it leaves an indentation almost. And I don't know if we even need to do it any much longer. He's going to do a little bit more. Now the next stage is going to be when it begins to take on a life of its own. We're going to turn it, are we going to leave it on high or turn it on low? And then we'll put the lid on the crock pot and let it go. Um, you can test the temperature, but I don't think we're going to be doing that. We're going to just see if it seems to be the right consistency to pour into the mold. All right. Because you're a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Being a teacher. Yeah, you got to have those steps, don't you? So we have finished stirring. We stirred about four to five minutes. Diane finished up with the wooden spoon. We had used the um, the immersion blender for a while. It started splashing a little bit more than we liked. So we went ahead and used the wooden spoon. And then we're putting the lid on. And we turned the crock pot down to low. 
and we are going to let this sit cook. Okay, so we have, um, as you can see, it's starting to get thick now. It's been about, um, we had it going 15 minutes, but we went ahead and did a little bit more immersion blender to really get it going. And you can see now it is tracing, which means when we move the pudding like substance around, it kind of sits on the top, as you can see it's doing. So we are now putting it on for about 50 more minutes. It's going to start to what we would call boil. Um, and so we'll let this go for a while and see what happens. Oh, there's Diane. 55 minutes, not 15, right? Okay. Five zero. Okay, so we are now um, getting this wave looking situation. As you can see it on the edges, it's starting to puff up. And one at one point it's going to be a monster, <laughs> probably a big wave. Um, once it does that, and you can actually see it can see it moving it looks like a wave it's really interesting <laughs> um once it does that then we'll be on our way to having soap ready to put in the molds and we will show you that here in a little bit very good just want to let you know that now that it is that pudding consistency it's going to be sitting here for about 50 5 oh, 50 minutes and we'll try to show you clips of just as we did last time of it kind of waving kind of rolling over and and that's just the reaction happening it's thickening up it's becoming soap just to, to clarify um, the reaction has already happened but now basically what we're trying to get is all the water out and um, so that's what the 50 minutes is all about Just showing you a bit of what is happening here. It almost looks like it has a crust on the top. And if I, you can see how thick it's getting to be. And so I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little bit of a stir so it doesn't go crazy. It's been known to become a monster and actually lift itself and lift the lid off of the crock pot. So we'll let this go and keep it on the 55, oh, 50 minutes. I want to show you, and I told oh, Diane about this. This, nice. this is the what we're going to use for our molds. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> now, you can use, and we used to use a wooden box. It was shaped like a rectangle. We we would pour yes. the soap in and and then cut it in squares. This is so much easier. <laughs> All you have to do is just basically pop them out once they're like once easy. they're once they're solid. Yes. Um, one of the things that you have to remember about the soap making is that when it is ready, it is ready. You got to move quick, getting it into your molds. Okay, All right. Fine. So the 50 minutes is up and um, we're going to look at that lovely soap. This uh, silicone muffin tin. And that's what we used the last time and it makes it a lot easier. We can just pop them right out of there. Whip it up a little bit. Nice. And then it, you do have to move pretty quickly to get this in because it does tend to be very, very, uh, get solidified very quickly. So I just try to get the same amount on each, each of them. Well, here is the soap that we put in the mold.
thanks for sticking with me through the soap making video and if you like videos like this don't forget to like and subscribe and until i see you next time stay rooted bye bye